All right, it's time for a little late in the morning unique devotion time. So I was up till just after midnight doing my schoolwork last night. Uh, just all but finished a class and my, my eyes were doing one of these. I was drooping a little bit and I wanted to keep going, but I couldn't. But that meant that I did not set the alarm this morning to try and make sure I got some proper sleep. And I did. But now it's trying to get away because this isn't normally when I wake up. So I thought, why don't I uh, have a little bit of coffee this morning? Um, I don't drink a full cup. <laughs> I, I, rare, I don't drink coffee very often, but lately I've been starting to stack that up. Um, Starbucks is becoming my friend. Uh, so, but besides coffee and trying to wake up, uh, scripture is always good. Start Just start to get the brain moving a little bit and start to connect with God and then then go throughout the day it always makes the day better so we're in second thessalonians uh chapter three this is verses 10 through 15 this actually is going to finish up um the warning against idleness section then we have uh one more section i believe for this chapter yeah that's it so the question i'm going to throw i've been using it first to if, if i have a question right away it uh, just seems to maybe uh, jibe, at least with this chapter, while you're reading. So, are you a busybody? That's the question. So let me read the scripture. That's what you need to ingest and get in your brain and what I need to uh, open my brain with. <clears throat> Four, even when we were with you, we commanded you this. If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are such we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. And if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, note that person and do not, uh, do not keep company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. <clears throat> so, there's some, there's a couple of things going on here. Are you a busy body? Are you a busy body? Like, do you not work? Um, At the risk of sounding judgmental, here in America, and possibly even some parts of the other uh, rest of the world, there's this sort of idea that the government can take care of people, and they set up business or, or they set up organizations to help those who are less fortunate, to give them a, a leg up. Um, you you run in some hard times, some troubled times. You can't quite get the education you need. You can't find that job you need. You wind, you find yourself with two children and no other, you know, single parent situation. You just cannot make ends meet. Um, so there are organizations that are in place to help supplement income in order to help get you over that hump. But, and that's what it's meant for. It's to help get over those things and and um, eventually not need those organizations anymore. But somewhere along the way, people tend to abuse the system. They use it way more than they need. They use it as a crutch. Um, and I, you know, different situations call for different reasoning. I, I completely understand that. I'm not pointing out any one person uh, or any group of people. Um, but there tends to be this busybodiness where people are content to sit at home and watch their TV shows and, and do whatever they want throughout the day and, and complain about the world. Um, but they're taking everything from the government uh, as handouts and they just continue to do that. That is sort of um, the short version of what he's talking about here. If anyone will not work, neither shall they eat. Now the government has stepped in and sort of said, yeah, and, and people with right reasons step in and say, yeah, but we want to help them get to a point where they can do that. 
And that's all well and good. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in disorderly manner. Use those situations to get reorganized. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm working on an education myself right now. I already have an education, um, but I'm, I'm moving into hopefully maybe a different kind of career. We'll see what happens. I've got two to four years ahead of me. But in the meantime, I still need to work. I need to be able to take care of my family properly. And God has set us up to work. Um, it keeps us out of trouble. It, 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 it um, forces us to become, well, it says a disorderly manner. It forces us to, to some degree, become organized. Not that everyone who works is organized. Um, but it starts to move you in that direction. And I think that's kind of what the point here is. He also talks about not eating. So I kind of took it literal, but let's take it slightly figurative. Jesus and the disciples all talk about the fruits of your labor, the fruit of the Spirit. Um, so when you're doing something, when you're working, there is a fruit at the end that you get to you, you get to eat. So maybe you're working on a painting. Uh, maybe you're working on a book. Maybe you're working on mowing the lawn. There is an end result. The painting, at the end, you get the fruit. You get to share in the fruit of the beautiful painting. At the end of the book, you get to, you end up sharing in the fruit of the knowledge you've taken in. At the end of taking care of your yard, you get the fruit of the beauty of all of your hard work that you've, that you've put into your yard. There is fruit there. But if you, if you don't do these things, if you don't go through the fruits of your, work towards the fruits of your labor, if you don't mow your yard, it's going to become horrendous. If you never pick up a book, you'll never learn. If you never watch YouTube videos, uh, some of them, or use the internet, you'll, you'll never learn. Um, <clears throat> so, or painting, if you, I'm going to just use painting. Um, if you're an artist, if you never pick up the brush, if you never do something in the way of art, you'll never get that fruit. That's another aspect of what they're, what's being talked about here. Um, that when you work, then you shall eat. And walking in order allows you to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. So I'll give one more example, and then I'll leave you at the question for yourself. Because really this is something you're going to have to talk to yourself about, pray to God about. Um, I've been working out uh, for the better part of 12 years of my life. In the, be in the very beginning, it was... Uh, sort of hit or miss, not really knowing what I'm doing. I did some running and some races, but never really lifting. Um, about three years ago, I started to get a little bit more into lifting and having a regiment. Um, my wife and I sitting down, we, we looked at books, we studied all kinds of stuff, and came up with a scenario for me to gain weight. Um, at the very beginning of all this, I was barely somewhere between 125 pounds, 130. Um, when I graduated high school, I was maybe 107 pounds soaking wet. So it went from 107 pounds to about my mid-20s uh, to uh, 125 to 130. And my goal, which seemed insurmountable and unattainable, was 160 pounds. Not of fat, but of as much lean muscle as I could with the littlest amount of fat as I could get. And We've been working towards that, working towards that. Um, actually, about a month ago, we reorganized my workout scenario to go shorter time period and harder and heavy weight. And all of a sudden, I started packing on weight like I hadn't had never done before. Stepped on the scale the other day, and I made my wife look at the scale so that I knew that I wasn't crazy. And it was teetering between 160 and 161. Never in my life would I have thought that I have, would be able to reach that goal or attain it. I just thought it was something that I would be forced to strive for, but there it is. Um, so in working, 
and putting forth time, 10 years, three years of solid workouts and eating habits and, and, and making everything fit in place bring, brings on the fruit that now because I worked, I shall eat and I've attained it. So this is definitely, this is never meant to be judgmental. This isn't like someone's doing right and someone's doing wrong. This is about pointing out the truth. And now what you need to do and what I'm going to do today is keep reevaluating my day. Look for places where I'm just being a busybody and not really working towards anything. Now, I'm not saying that there is rest. Rest and relaxation is needed for the body. Don't remove uh, times of rest and relaxation and start becoming this perfectionist, must be doing something with every part of my time day person um, don't don't do that there's a there's a place for rest but look for any places where you maybe should be working but you're not and then pray to God about it and ask him if you know what direction you should go how you should change it where how you should go about it start researching asking questions and see what comes of it this is a big question this can be life-changing for some this can be life tweaking for others, um, but you're always going to fall somewhere in one of those categories. So, are you a busybody? I don't know. This is probably one of the longest videos I've ever made, so I'm going to stop it right there. I gave plenty of examples. Um, if you need, please go back and at least re-listen to the scripture. Um, maybe even re-listen to some of the examples I gave to help jog your mind and make you think about it a little bit more. And on that note, I hope that God gives you all the blessings you deserve even more so all the blessings you don't deserve. Have a wonderful day, and uh, I hope that you find all kinds of fruit at the end of your labors. I'll see you tomorrow.